The tree is adorned with ornaments bright. If your holiday gifts have been quite enough, a Lone Star Chris Kringle still has more stuff. Unwrap that box labeled number 22. Emmett Smith with the football is another gift for you. He scored 24 touchdowns in this Super Bowl drive. It's an NFL record if he gets 25. Tonight, you'll be getting a true football feast. The Cowboys are champs of the NFC East. Troy Aikman, with his star so bright, will lead the Cowboys' offense tonight. Doesn't that aid look like a snowman? Will a big game tonight be a Super Bowl omen? Yesterday, the Cowboys got some gifts of their own. The Eagles and Niners had opportunities flown. When Troy throws the ball, it often comes down in the hands of Michael Irvin for a Dallas touchdown. 106 catches should make you a believer. Another Pro Bowl awaits this great receiver. Tonight they will play for your eyes to see for home field advantage in the old NFC. These Christmas goodies should give you a reason to watch this final game of the regular season. Arizona Cardinals are the Cowboys' next test as St. Nick begins a well-deserved rest. Santa's job's done, his year's complete. Now he can watch these teams compete. Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona on a beautiful night for football. Temperature in the mid-50s, little or no wind, just an absolutely beautiful night here in Tempe, just outside of Phoenix. So, hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deerdorf. Happy you're with us as we close out our 26th season of Monday Night Football here on ABC. And I know I speak for Al and Dan and all the rest of us on the Monday Night Football crew. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and the happiest of holidays. Not a happy holiday, of course, for the Cardinals. The Cardinals come into the night at 4-11. and 11. This is their final game of the season. They are playing for pride tonight and a chance to derail the Cowboys in their hopes to have the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And that, of course, is a scenario that developed yesterday when the 49ers lost to Atlanta 28-27. to And Al, the Dallas Cowboys were flying about 35,000 feet on the way to Phoenix when they heard that score and they knew that this game no longer was meaningless. The veterans were not going to sit down. This was a different football team. They win tonight. They have the home field advantage as long as they're in the playoffs. Great president. Now all they have to do is take advantage of it. One thing about the Cowboys, they're America's team. They're also the best soap opera in football year after year. This year, no exception. From opening night when Jerry Jones got the rest of the league crazy with a Nike deal to Deion Sanders' $35 million contract to the fourth down disaster in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago, this team has always been in the headlines. When we saw them Labor Day night, week one, they were sensational. Killed the Giants, 35 nothing. We saw them on a Monday night in November, the first Monday of November against Philadelphia. They destroyed the Eagles and were anointed by just about everyone as the Super Bowl champions, but they've struggled since then. Still with a win tonight, they will wrap up the regular season with the best record in the NFC and the road to the Super Bowl will go through Dallas. But I think it's not only important for Dallas to win tonight, but to win somewhat convincingly to get their confidence level back where it was about a month ago. And tonight they take on the Arizona Cardinals with a mark of 4-11 and in the stadium, Dan, that looks vaguely familiar, but when's the last time we were here? It's been a while, Al. Uh, September of 1988, I think, was the last time the three of us made a visit here to Tempe, Arizona. That was the Cardinals' first year here in the Valley of the Sun, and there's not been a great deal of success since they have been here. This team, this this franchise has not had a winning season and since 1984 when they went nine and seven and buddy ryan is right now an embattled coach he proclaimed there's a winner in town when he got here two years ago and it has not happened yet they came close last year at eight and eight a lot of uh, forecasts had this club making a serious run for the playoffs here in 95 injuries have just slaughtered this ball club buddy hasn't been able to hold it together and what they do here tonight may have some bearing as to whether or not he's able to hold on to his job and of course a formidable opponent is on hand that's the Dallas Cowboys and their coach Barry Switzer's down on field right now with Arlen Swan thank you very much Dan Barry when you were flying in the Phoenix you didn't think you'd be playing for home field advantage throughout the playoffs how has it changed the attitude and your approach to this game well first of all I'm not going to be asking questions after the night about uh, how much do we play Emmett and Troy was how much they play do we think about resting they're going to play 60 minutes they're going to extend themselves anything can happen in football do you play this seasons is a long season as Philadelphia as San Francisco it's hard to win on the road our team knows that's gonna be a tough game tonight and we know what separates it we know you have some injuries Jay Novacek is not here Eric Bjornsson is 
going to play for you, his first set of tight end. How is he going to be a factor in well, the game? Well, he has tremendous potential. We brought him here to be a Novacek for us. We didn't know that he's going to have to be tonight. Uh, hopefully, he'll play like Jay. We missed several of them, uh, but we got guys that got to step up and they got to play. Barry, thank you very much. Al, it's like this team got a shot of vitamin B12 and uh, ammonia capsule. The nostrils are flared. They want this one really bad. And Lynn, no matter what happens, they have next week off, and then they will go home if they win tonight and meet either Atlanta, Detroit, or Philadelphia in the second round of the playoffs. That's Kevin Williams dropping back deep. Greg Davis kicks off for the Cardinals, and the final game of the regular season is underway. Kevin Williams from inside the 10 brings it back out to the 33-yard line. Andre Waters tackles him there. And let's take a look at the Dallas Cowboys. Despite a gimpy knee, despite a calf that's bothered him a good part of the season, Troy Aikman's had a fine year. He's thrown only six interceptions in 400 passes. The great Emmett Smith with Moose Johnston in the backfield. Irvin and Williams, the wideouts, and the aforementioned Bjornsson, the rookie tight end. Two and a Newton, Kennard, Allen, and Williams the offensive front. Jay Novacek, arthroscopic knee surgery, but up walking yesterday, a day after the surgery, they do expect him back in two weeks. From the 34, Aikman to the air with good protection, but the pass a little low for Moose Johnston, an incomplete. Garth Jacks was covering on the play. Now the Cardinal defense playing better of late. Banks in Eric Swan emerging as a star. Wilson and Clyde Simmons, the ex-Eagle. Irving, Eric Hill, a vastly underrated backer who doesn't get nearly the publicity he deserves, and Jacks on the outside. Aeneas Williams goes to the Pro Bowl. Lance Brown is a rookie. Seth Joyner, the one-time linebacker, now a strong safety. And Brent Alexander, the free safety. Second down and 10. And they flank Moose Johnston to the left, leaves Smith alone in the backfield, and the pass through the hands of Kevin Williams, an incomplete. Kevin Williams, who had a huge reception last week against the Giants on a third and ten to keep the game-winning drive alive. Probably his best game of the season. He has not been what they expected he would be over the year, but he really had a fine game against the Giants. Kept that drive alive. He had five receptions in all last week, and they came on third downs when they were so important. So well, he figures in heavily tonight in their play action plan. Certainly the matchup they were looking for, Frank, getting Williams locked up on Seth Joyner, a linebacker trying to play in the secondary. That, that favors Dallas if only Williams holds onto the ball. Third and ten, the Cardinals with a seven-man front. And the pass is caught by Williams in Arizona territory. And a first down to the 36-yard line. Kevin Williams becoming Mr. Third and ten. Tackled by Brent Alexander. That's a 30-yard gain. Blitz by the Cardinals and picked up quickly by Troy Aikman, Michael Irving. Getting double coverage on a blitz, that means that Kevin Williams is going to run free in the secondary, and that's exactly what happened. There's a little deal up front for the Cardinals. Here is Kevin Williams in the gap, hit the hole, and a good read by Troy Aikman and a great delivery. Last week, Aikman with five completions on third down and ten or more. And now Emmett Smith goes nowhere on his first carry of the night. Emmett has already won the rushing title. Clyde Simmons, a familiar foe, stops him. No, but a chance for Emmett Smith tonight to, to break an NFL record for touchdowns scored in a season. Right now he's tied with the mark that John Riggins set a number of years ago. And tonight Emmett Smith has a chance with just one rushing touchdown to... Make that record his and his alone. And needs nine yards for his best season ever. Second and ten. With Johnson in motion. Providing the blocking for Emmett Smith, who's inside the 30 and takes it to the 25-yard line in the first down as Alexander makes the tackle. 12-yard game. Buddy Ryan walking the sidelines. He calls the defenses for the Cardinals. That's his. He is the ace at that. And they go with the famed 46 defense. The Cowboys have had success with it. They have won 10 times in consecutive games against these Cardinals, and that has got to really get to Buddy Ryan. He is a great competitor. Ryan, when he was at Philadelphia, at 1.17 straight over the Landry and Johnson Cowboys. Aiken on first down, hits Williams. Nice spin move, and Kevin Williams with a touchdown. He ran around Lance Brown like Brown was a rookie, and he is. Uh, and again, double coverage.
yards over in the other side against Michael Irvin. And Buddy Ryan taking the chance, taking Irvin out of the play if he can. But that leaves Kevin Williams all alone, locked up with Lance Brown and Williams with a little head fake like he was going to take a deep, broke through the sidelines. And an easy six for the Dallas Cowboys. What a fine looking drive. Well, it, it, it's tough to get juked any worse than this as a corner. A little bit of a slip, but the move to the outside by Williams, and then what makes it so effective is that he, he fights his own momentum to go back to the middle of the field. So that's, uh, we'll credit some of that to poor tackling in the secondary, but uh, give Kevin Williams his due. It was a fine move back to the middle of the field after the catch. Williams' first touchdown of the season, 222 into the game, 7 to nothing, Cowboys. Closely the reaction of Troy Aikman when he sees that this pass to Kevin Williams is a touchdown. Not a smile, not even a flicker of happiness. Troy Aikman's been quoted as saying that, you know, a lot of the joy is gone from this game. There's so much pressure on the Dallas Cowboys to win that a lot of the spontaneity, the fun has been removed from this game. And Frank, looking at him right there, I, I believe it. And when does an 11-4 team ever taken as much abuse from their home fans as this team has, really? Here's Chris Bonio's kick. LaShawn Johnson from the 12 and gets ripped at the 22-yard line. The tackle made by Dominique Ross just activated a rookie running back from Valdosta <laughs> State. And, well, whatever emotion is lacking in the... Uh, in the uh, reaction of Aikman is more than made up for by Joe Evazano, the special teams coach. A look at Dave Craig, so many years at Seattle, then to Kansas City, and then Detroit, and now in his first season in Arizona. Garrison Hurst and Larry Centers in the backfield, Moore and Sanders, the wideouts, McBride, the tight end, and the guys up front, Tharp, Love, Cunningham, Redman, and Selby. Garrison Hurst has already rushed for over 1,000 yards this season. Third year out of Georgia. Dave Craig retreats, swings one out. That's the 90th catch of the season made by Larry Centers. And he's tackled at the 25 by Darren Woodson, who played his college ball here at Arizona State. Now Dallas defensively banged up up front because Charles Haley had back surgery. He's gone. Russell Maryland inactive. Tolbert Hennings let moves back to the middle. And Carver, who played his college ball here. Edwards, Miles for the injured Robert Jones and Darren Smith of the backers. The corners are Sanders and Brown. The safeties are Marion and Woodson. Second and eight from the 25-yard line. First. Picked up about four up to the 29-yard line. And it will be third down and three. Monday Night Football being brought to you by Bud Light, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. Make it a Bud Light. Penzo, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearings. And the all-new Ford Taurus, a look you've never seen from a name you know well. Buddy Ryan, head coach at Philly for five years. Now at the end of his second year, and a four-year contract with the Cardinals. Two to go. Third down and three. Out of the gun. Craig survey picked off by Brock Marion. And all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. One day Craig should never have released. He has had great days, a streaky quarterback, and he has had bad days. This one is not starting off good. 20th interception of the season thrown by Dave Craig. Little roll, looking for added protection, threw it right into the hands of Marion. 31-yard return. That's the sixth interception of the season for Marion and for Brock, his first NFL touchdown, the first of his career. Now Chris Bonial out of the hold of John Jett, normally Novacek holds, but tonight it's Jett. And we've not played four minutes, and it's been a very Merry Christmas thus far for Dallas. 14-0. Dave Craig spent a dozen years in Seattle, then went to Kansas City for two years. Detroit last year played very well in place of the injured Scott Mitchell, came here and uh, throws an interception that <laughs> you wouldn't see a rookie throw for the most part. Bonio 
to LaShawn Johnson. And he's tackling the 29. A lot of speculation about Barry Switzer. I asked Jerry Jones before the game if Switzer is back next year unconditionally as the Cowboys coach. Yes, he does. And uh, uh, Barry is uh, actually uh, has engaged not only our, our staff, but our players. Uh, don't pay any attention to uh, any talk you hear when we've lost two in a row, or basically it looks like we've got all the talent in the world, but uh, may not get home field advantage. Those are the kinds of things I think you expect. He's a tough guy. He wouldn't have the job if he wasn't tough. He was put in a tough position when he came in to coach behind Jimmy Johnson. I'm tickled with the job he's doing, and uh, we're looking forward to hopefully some success in this playoff. Dave Craig has to eat the ball and takes a yard loss. So a lot of people speculated when, as you look at Jerry Jones, Jerry said he'd accept nothing less than a trip to the Super Bowl. He said right there, Barry Switzer, regardless, comes back next year as the coach. And I don't, uh, I don't think that Jerry Jones has changed his tune one iota from the very beginning. I don't think he's wavered at all from the very beginning. Uh, he has made it clear. Question. He made it perfectly clear. Barry is my man, and I am dancing with the guy who brought him. One of the 12-4 a year ago, and he's 11-4, getting ready to go 12-4 tonight. Second and 12. And Garrison Hurst over right guard up to the 32-yard line. He's tackled there by Colbert. If you start out throwing the football, you throw an interception that kills you against a team that gave up 244 yards rushing last week to the Giants. Rodney Hampton, 187 yards, and you put the ball up two of your first plays from scrimmage. You kind of wonder, uh, did they watch last week's game? Uh, this is a Dallas team that is weak against the run because of the injuries you talked about, Al, and uh, that's probably where the Cardinals should be concentrating. Four receiver set, third down and eight from the 32-yard line. Craig takes a shovel pass and then throws incomplete, intended for Stevie Anderson with Bailey covering on the play, and the Cardinals will punt. Well, this is a ball club with only four wins that uh, if Buddy Ryan comes back as coach next year, they have to make some personnel decisions, and I'm not so sure if we were to put Buddy on camera right now that Dave Craig would get the glowing endorsement that, uh, that Barry Switzer got from Jerry Jones. Uh, well out in front of the receiver, you can't lay it all on Dave Craig, but you certainly do that interception. He has put his team in a hole, but next year is going to be his 17th year in the league. How long can you go with a guy that age? It's a, it's a huge question here in Arizona. Jeff Eagle is the Pro Bowl punter. It sends one down. Fair caught by Kevin Williams. A 42-yard boot. Cowboys have it again begin Saturday and the first two games right here on ABC a doubleheader coming your way Miami against Buffalo great matchup in the AFC beginning early Saturday and then following that we will be in Philadelphia the Lions the Red Hot Lions against the Philadelphia Eagles wild card Saturday right here on ABC 14 to nothing Dallas first and 10 from the 27 yard line Aikman throwing incomplete Michael Irvin, the intended receiver, Lance Brown covering, and Barry Switzer may have every wish come true tonight. If Dallas can blow Arizona out, he'll have a victory in hand, and he can then rest his regulars in the second half, something he would have done had this game meant nothing. He talked about the fact that, that Emmett Smith would not have seen a lot of work tonight. He, he would have brought him in, though, if they got the ball in a goal line situation to give him a shot at, at getting that single season touchdown record. They're, they're being afforded a pretty good opportunity here by the Cardinals. Emmett Smith runs right into Garth Jacks. Tackle for no gain, third down and ten. Boy, Garth Jacks is a guy who'll bring it to you. You know, he's been around the year for ten, around the league for ten years, and a lot of special teams play. And when he was in Dallas, he was a fixture on their short yardage situation. And one of the things you can always count on is that he'll put a hat on the ball carrier if he can get to it. This is one of the one of the hard hitting guys in this league, and a real popular guy around the locker room. Kind of a player that uh, the Buddy Ryan's of the world really like. Third down and ten. 8.45 remaining in the opening quarter. And the Cardinals come across the line and there's no whistle, even though it appeared that the, one of them was unabated. Keith McCann coming across the line, but Dick Hantack and the crew not whistling the play dead. 
And he's dropped back at the 18-yard line pending the penalty call. The flags came so early, you thought you would hear the whistle that usually accompanies that, and we didn't. Well, you got the tight end for the Cowboys leaving. He, go, he goes out of his stance early as well. Neutral zone violation on the defense. Five-yard penalty prior to the snap. Still third down. Yeah, they're going to say that, uh, and what Dick Hantak is saying, is that the movement by the defense caused Eric Bjornsson, the tight end, to, to break out of his stance. And that's a new rule that the, the league has put in, and it really is a big plus to the guys on offense. Eric uh, being congratulated for uh, not being in the doghouse. Eric, the rookie Look at the very Washington. top of your screen, the very top. There's Bjornsson as he reacts to the defense jumping and breaks from his stance. Well, he's in some big shoes tonight, filling in for the injured Jay Novacek. And they expect a lot of him. He was a wide receiver at Washington. He has bulked up a little bit, 6'4", 235 pounds. And while well, he is not a Jay Novacek yet, they brought him in to be one. And he's shown some spectacular possibilities. Third down and five, Dallas from the own 33-yard line. Aikman, the short drop, and then hits Michael Irvin, and one pro bowler is run out by another, Aeneas Williams, with the stop up at the 39, but Irvin has the first down. Even though they double Michael Irvin, they are still able to get the ball to him there. They had Williams on him, they had a, a deep man dropping from the secondary, and they continue to go with single coverage on Kevin Williams. They, uh, Williams taking the outside position, he knows he's got help on the inside. Yes, they were able to get the completion. Williams in motion. Emmett Smith through the middle, and Emmett tackled up at the 42-yard line. You know, we've got Pro Bowl matchups all over the field here. There we've got Irvin and Williams. We've got a wonderful matchup in the interior line between that man, Eric Swan, going against Larry Allen. Both of these guys, first-time Pro Bowl selections this year. Both of them young and uh, in their physical primes. And uh, these are two of the young bulls locking horns here on the line of scrimmage. This is fun. This is fun to watch. Second and eight at the 42. The conventional four-man rush, and that's good enough with Clyde Simmons. Sacking Aikman at the 36-yard line. Former Philadelphia Eagle played for Buddy Ryan. The last few weeks, he has really exploded. That's his 10th sack of the season, and he has just been superb over the past few weeks. A strong pass rusher from the outside. Mark a jumps up towards the line of scrimmage and really is in no position to defend an upfield rush by Clyde Simmons. I don't know if that was some type of miscommunication. Tuane uh, taking a, a, a really bizarre technique to try to block him on a, on a passing play. Simmons sacked Aikman four and a half times in the one game in 1990 when Clyde was the Phillies. Third and 14, and Troy under pressure, but gets it off to Michael Irvin, who makes the catch in front of Aeneas Williams. That time, Buddy Ryan said everybody, in a typical move on Buddy Ryan, third and long yardage, and the blitz was on from Terry Hogue, the safety. All the linebackers were coming. That automatically locked Michael Irvin up in single coverage, and it was a good read by both Irvin and Aikman. Aikman knew per, he was going to get popped, and this is kind of Buddy... It's uh, Terry Hogue, the safety, that gets to him, but this is what you know you're going to have to take these pops with a Buddy Ryan defense. They bring everybody, and you will never have enough to pick them all up. 16-yard gain, and now they go back to Emmett Smith. And the blocking breaks down as Emmett gets to the 45-yard line, and Dan, Emmett is not breaking as many long runs as he did early in the season. No, and, and a lot of it is being uh, laid at the doorstep of the offensive line. You know, they lost a lot when they lost Ray Donaldson, their very talented center, uh, who was voted to the Pro Bowl and who broke his leg Thanksgiving. Uh, Derek Kennard has is, is really filled in pretty well at center, but this is an offensive line that two years ago dominated everybody. They are not dominating everybody now. They're still really good, but they're not nearly as dominating as they used to be. Second and seven, and around Williams, and that's a first down as he gets tripped up at the 31-yard line by Lance Brown. That's a good call. The Cardinals a tough pursuing defense. 
And Kevin Williams with a good move to break this back to the inside. Watch this. It was Clyde Simmons on the outside. He saw it coming all the way. Kevin Williams took it to the inside, picks up the yardage for the first down. Outstanding block by Derek Kennard, the center, who went back and actually got two Arizona Cardinals, putting both of them on the ground. Ninth play of the drive. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Dallas leading 14 to nothing. Aikman guns one right between the eight of Michael Irvin and very close to a first down. And he has one at the 20-yard line. Well, if you were a doctor writing a prescription for the Dallas Cowboys, I don't know that you could fill one out much better than what they're getting so far. Good quality play from their number one people. Pinpoint passing by Aikman. Good solid running game. It's all working pretty well for the Dallas Cowboys. And I guess the doctor just wrote a new prescription. He said, let's play Deion Sanders at wide receiver. And he flanks wide right. Aikman is 5 of 8 for 90 yards. Seth Joyner lines up facing Sanders. That is Emmett Smith picks up a couple. That is the worst matchup I have ever seen. Speaking of prescriptions, by a, that's exactly right. The doctor who wrote that matchup for the Cardinals was into the old drug case, I think. How do you put Seth Joyner, a linebacker who's filling in at safety, locked in man coverage with the fastest man in the NFL? Well, Seth Joyner is a good athlete. I, I had him in superstars. I know you Not did that too, good. man. But you put him against Deion Sanders. He obviously was going to have help on the inside, but this guy's got some speed. It just blow by it. And Deion says, give me that one again. Second down and eight. Aikman off the play fake, the deep drop, and then has nobody open. Moose Johnston, uh, the closest receiver. Pressure put on by Keith McCann, so it'll be third and eight. It's the second time they tried to get the ball to Daryl Johnston. Uh, you know, if, uh, if you'd have said coming into this game, I'm going to buy a ticket because I want to see the uh, Pro Bowl fullback in action, uh, you'd have been right. It's just that that Pro Bowl fullback is Larry Centers of the uh, Arizona Cardinals, uh, who beat out Daryl Johnston uh, in the balloting this year to go to Honolulu. Johnston had been there the previous two years. That guy this year, Larry Centers, wins uh, his first Pro Bowl assignment. Third down and eight at the 18-yard line. Cowboys are, are three of three on third it's down. Bumble. Bumble and a sack by Simmons and a loose ball and Dallas's ball. The Cowboys oh. maintain possession. How do the Cardinals not get possession of that football? There's a, one of their guys on the ground had it. He landed on the ball and had it. It just came out, and Kennard was right there, and he plopped right on top of it. That's, that's why you win four games, when, when breaks like that continue to go against you. Dallas have been the only team not to have a fumble on a quarterback sack this season until now. That's Keith. No, that's Bankston. Bankston has the ball and, and just can't control it. 39-yard attempt by Boniol with a new holder, Jet, and this is the 23rd in a row for Boniol. He's missed only one all season in week three. The new holder, Jet, who held in college at East Carolina right there. Spots it perfectly. 242 left in the period. 17 nothing, Big D. You ever saw you would even say it <laughs> We're back. Hello. <laughs> Hello again, everyone. <laughs> 17 to nothing. <laughs> With 242 to go in the opening quarter. Chris Bonio the kickoff for Dallas. And it's taken to the 10-yard line by LaShawn Johnson, who had a spectacular college career at Northern Illinois, and he runs it back up to the 38-yard line where Brock Marion makes the tackle. Cardinals try to climb back in it. Two and a half to go in the quarter. 17-0 Cowboys. Ward, so let's have, we'll have the Dannys and the Frankies and the Alfalfas. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your MVP and your coach of the year? Coach of the year is Marty Schottenheim. I don't, uh, he's my pick. How about you? Uh, he, it'd be hard to go beyond him. I like Ray Rhodes. Ray Rhodes came in in a tough situation, and he's taken a lot of people that really, I didn't think could play as well as they did, and he's turned into that quite a football team. I'm going to go with Wayne Fonts. The way he uh, finished the season. Give me some sugar. Yes, the champ in Detroit now is Wayne must stay. 38-yard line, Garrison Hurst picks up about four. Who's your MVP, Dan? 
Well, if you're going to go, I, I, I'll just pick a guy that you might, but uh, who's single-handedly picked up a team, I think, and propelled them into the playoffs. It would be uh, Scott Mitchell of the Detroit Lions, who, who his play, I think, has has put his team into the playoffs. So he played better than anybody, but yeah. uh, I got to go. Brett Favre, Green Bay. He's had a, a remarkable season. He is yep. the Packer offense. Yep. You can make the same argument. You like. Despite the fact he had a better first half and second half, I still like Emmitt Smith. I think to me he he is so valuable to this team, and I don't know where Dallas would be without him. As Garrison Hurst takes it up to the 46. As usual, we're all in sync. <laughs> we're just trying to be different. Hey, Cover the globe. It's you, 17 to nothing. You bet. <laughs> Early, you can tell that we have thought long and hard about that. And honorable mention to Jerry Rice. I mean, you, you know, the thing with Jerry is you, you just take him for granted. So, isn't that the truth? Yeah. It's you know, didn't he pop into my mind what a remarkable yeah. year he's had? Yep. Of course, he could win it every year. Lifetime Achievement Award. You know, a guy that, uh, you know, you talk about Jerry Rice and, and, and Urban and Herman Moore. Right after this play, somebody needs to be mentioned here. Third down and three from the 46-yard line. Play. And that's picked off at the 34-yard line by Larry Brown, who takes it to the Arizona 48-yard line. Boy, Craig found another open cowboy. Second pick of the night. Ryan muttering and mumbling. And the boos are cascading down, and Jim Hart's going to ask for his number 17 back. A sixth <laughs> interception for Larry Brown. But another ball. I don't know. I don't know what Craig is looking at here. Uh, this is receiver let up on him. Uh, <laughs> Brown was the only one open. Of course, you go back and consider Craig has been sacked 50 times this year. Uh, maybe that makes you just a little antsy back there. Both picks tonight on third and three. And the Cowboys first down from the 48. And then Smith and picks up four. Taken down at the 44-yard line by Michael Bankston. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle has made its way over from Torrance, California, about 350 miles away. And is high above Sun Devil Stadium, which will be the side of the Super Bowl next month. Joel Chamberlain at the controls on this beautiful late December night. January, uh, January 28th, the uh, mm -hmm. date of Super Bowl 30. Dion. And the Cardinals coverage is unorganized. Dion back in there offensively as the pass is swung out to Emmett Smith and a nice tackle made there by Terry Irving standing right with him and stopping him for a loss. That was uh, that was actually a lateral or very close to it from Aikman back to uh, Emmett Smith. It looks and, little, it looks and that little, was Joyner again on on uh, Dion. It looks a little crazed, but there's always some kind of uh, sort of brilliant madness to a Buddy Ryan defense. He, there was a lot of help to the inside. Now Troy Aikman wanted to go there. He couldn't do there. He was he was forced to throw that ball to Emmett Smith. So it looks sloppy, but it worked. Cowboys leading 17 nothing. Monday Night Football back after this message and a word for our ABC station. Defense rests and the offense starts the second quarter with a third down and 11 as the Cardinals 29. That was up 17 to nothing. Aikman running for a first down and slides for a halt at the 37 yard line. Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynn Swan on this Christmas night at Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. The first quarter numbers, not very pretty on the Phoenix side. First see one turnover, an instant touchdown. And the second one, already within relatively yeah. close to field goal range. Not a strong number in the passing department for the <laughs> Cardinals. <laughs> oh, a big zero. First and ten at the... 37-yard line. And it's Smith. And he works inside the 35. Gained a little more than three. Terry Irving makes the stop. Youngest players to score 100 touchdowns, and that's where Emmett goes tonight with one. Emmett is 26 years, seven months old, so by two years he would be the youngest. Brown was the youngest. Jerry Rice, Walter Payton, Lenny Moore, and Don Hudson all in their 30s when they went into triple figures. And of course, 
Jones that next touchdown will also set a National Football League record that it will be number 25. Second down and seven. And Smith picks up only a half a yard or so. Seth Joyner making the head. You know, a while ago I was talking and derailed by Dave Craig's interception. We were talking about Rice and Irvin. How about Isaac Bruce of the Rams? 1,791 yards, 119 receptions. That yardage figure, the second best in NFL history, that has to be the best year anybody ever had who didn't go to the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop and think about it. Yeah, he, you know, with Carter and Moore and Irvin and Rice, he has a year like that, and, and, and he's watching uh, our rendition of the Pro Bowl on ABC. Definitely in the Raw Conference. Third down and seven, and the catch is not made, dropped by Corey Fleming about the only imperfect thing Dallas has done in the game thus far. Oh, and Fleming knows that that ball was right in his hands. He would have had a first down, and as it turns out, the Cowboys not within Bono's field goal range, so they bring out the punting unit. So they have something that they've worked on, and there's the 34-yard line punting the football. This is something they work on. Pick that high when you try to cover. John Jett will try to feather one. And it bounces at the five and is down at the four. So Jett does his job. Interception does not hurt the Cardinals, but they are pinned deep with 12.39 of the half. Is being brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. The 1996 Chrysler Cirrus and Bud Light, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. Make it a Bud Light. You know, luck just follows good football teams around. That ball's headed for the end zone and it inadvertently, inadvertently hits the form of Charlie Williams and the Cardinals start with horrendous field position. That ball didn't take the bounce Jet wanted, but the result was exactly what he wanted. Cardinals at their own five-yard line. Garrison Hurd picks up a yard or two. He's tackled there by Godfrey Miles, the middle linebacker. Cardinals, well, for years it was Jim Hart and Neil Lomax, but look at that. 88 Lomax made the most starts at QB. Then Hogeball, Rosenbaum, Tupa, Chandler, Burline, Schrader, and now Craig. Eight different quarterbacks over the last eight years, and next year you can count on it being nine. I, I think you're right about that. The one that really threw them was Rosenbaum, who they invested a number one draft choice in and then just retired, walked away from the game as a complete surprise to the franchise. Second down and eight. And the catch made over the middle and up to the 25-yard line for a first down goes Larry Centers, who is now one catch away from tying Roger Craig for most catches by a running back in the history of the National Football League in any one season. You know, that graphic we just saw, guys, uh, the magnitude of that has to set in. That is an extraordinary... I don't want to call it an achievement. It's, it's a disaster that you've had that many different people playing quarterback successively. It, mm -hmm. I, I, it's got to be unparalleled in the NFL. Number 91 for Sitters. First down of the 25-yard line. And Larry Sitters has just caught his 92nd pass of the season. Deion Sanders with the tackle, and that ties the mark. Centers a pro bowler, a mark set by Roger Craig with San Francisco the year he went over 1,000 yards both in rushing and receiving most catches for a running back in the history of the NFL. And there they are, Craig and Centers right now, and clearly Centers will be at the very top by himself before this game is done. Derrick LaVille this year caught 87 at San Francisco, and they want to take that ball out of play. <laughs> and not to diminish anything that Larry Centers has done, but he's he's got 254 yards rushing. It, I just want to emphasize what an extraordinary year Roger Craig had in 85 when he put that 1,000-1,000 year together. Yep. It's also a new Cardinal team record as Centers carries for no game. That broke the mark of 91 held by J.T. Smith, the wide receiver. Godfrey Miles makes the tackle here. So Larry Centers putting his name into the record book on his way to Honolulu for the Pro Bowl. My 
Kyle filling in, as we mentioned earlier, for the injured Robert Jones. And Dan was talking about prescriptions for this Dallas football team. Stopping that on second and short, uh, that's a pretty good prescription. They have been giving up a lot of yards from a lot of different teams on the ground. And that time they stuffed that pretty good. Moving Leon Led back inside has helped, has helped a lot. That's how you play the run by Leon Lett. Get underneath the pads of the guy trying to root you out and put a shoulder on the ball carrier. Center didn't get it. Way down 17 to nothing. What do you do? Uh, the running team is halfway out onto the field. Buddy Ryan is probably waiting to see how far it is. Larry Center's injured somehow. Take a look. There's Lett, 78. Look how he gets up, fights in, puts the initial hit on the ball carrier. Strong play inside by Leon Millett. And they had been using him out, Dan alluded to it, out on the outside at the end because of the various injuries along that defensive line, and he just was not that effective out there. Well, they're trying to come up with an in impact player on the edge. Tony Tolbert on the edge, on the other side of defensive end, has two bad knees. Charles Haley had the surgery on his disc. He may or may not be back in time to play in the Super Bowl, and they're just trying to get some impact on the outside. And putting Leon out there, wasn't the answer. Mm -hmm. Larry Centers angry as he walks off the field. Fourth down in the length of the football. And Jeff Beagles, the NFC Pro Bowl punter to kick. Kevin Williams and Deion Sanders are both back deep. And it's a short floating kick. And the fair catch is pulled for and made at the 29-yard line by Deion. And that's where the Cowboys and Aikman take over with 9.57 remaining in the half. In Arizona, where it's the Cowboys 17, the Cardinals something. Christmas night in the uh, Valley of the Sun. And boy, it was the Valley of the Sun today. <laughs> Beautiful day. Temperature in the upper 60s. If you look at the, the Phoenix area, we're in Tempe, which is just southeast of the city limits. Thank you, King Kong Bundy, for letting us use your head. <laughs> <laughs> First down. <laughs> Cowboys at their own 29-yard line. Is that Daniel Benzel? Yes. And it's Smith for a first down, 13-yard gain, a roll down by Garth Jacks. And it's Smith. What a block by Daryl Johnson. You've got to get somebody to seal the perimeter. There's the moose on the corner. Look at that. He gets the double hit. No wonder Emmett Smith has had such a productive career. He's, he's a talented individual, but he gets wonderful blocking by Daryl Johnson out in front of him. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. Smith the other way. Exploits the middle for a gain of about five. Bernard Wilson makes the tackle with a little more than nine minutes to go in the half. And again, to, to set it for Dallas, if they win tonight, they have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and what that would mean is that if they were to play the 49ers in the NFC Championship game, it would be in Irving, Texas. It also would mean that they would not have to face Green Bay in that second round game. They would face either Atlanta, if they beat Green Bay, or the winner of the Detroit-Philadelphia game. From the 47-yard line, this play is dead before its inception. I think 10 guys knew the snap count, and Derek Kennard didn't. <laughs> they, uh, they all were moving, and the ball wasn't. He's got that sort of a shame look, doesn't he, when he walks back there. He doesn't want to look at anyone. <laughs> Ernie Zampezi, the offensive coordinator, looking off from high above. And I mean high above. The interesting thing here <laughs> is that the center does not go into the record book or the play-by-play. -play. A center can't be offside. So it's, he's, uh, you know, he's uh, by the uh, he's a control. By the letter of the law, he's blameless there. <laughs> somebody, else, somebody else made a false start. Second down nine from the 42-yard line. Aikman guns it to... Kevin Williams, and he's tackled at the 48-yard line. He almost ran back and uh, lost what would have been a first down, and I think he still has enough. Uh, he's close. He's, he's really very close. close. He had the first down, and he tried to break break it back to the inside for additional yardage, and he's going to be right on the marker. Okay. 
I just caught Paul McGuire. I think he has it. He is uh, pretty good at that, isn't he? He's very good at that. By the nose of the ball. I like that. And he is on the coverage, and he forced him to go back to the inside. I'd try to make a guess from here, but I can't see the football from this <laughs> Tell booth. Tell me about it. <laughs> we, we are looking down onto the blimp. It is a first down. There is not a... Uh, there is not all the way back. That is a three-story structure uh -huh. that's built on top of the upper deck here at the Sun Devil Stadium. And uh, only he of the keen eye can see what's going on down on the field from up here. Hey, what do you expect for a billion dollars in right fees? First down at the 48-yard line. to double up on Michael Irvin and perhaps because of the confidence they gained in Williams last week against the Giants they are looking for him tonight and finding him big time he can put some moves on him and he gets his hands on the football too a good return man of course and a nifty runner after he catches the football dangerous runner a pure zone defense by the Cardinals Williams right in the void again you see Alexander slipping he's the first guy there should have been the primary guy to make the hit he falls down and the hit doesn't come until the one yard line Bonyol knocks it through and with 731 to go in the first half the Dallas Cowboys doing exactly what they had wished for and hoped for this Christmas evening winning and winning convincingly of the Cardinals uh, tonight and for most of the season. Seth Joyner and company uh, getting routed to this point. And a very happy Kevin Williams with no touchdowns in his first 15 games and a pair tonight coming off his best game of the season and best of his career last week. I believe it's his first 100-yard game. Mm -hmm. That 113 he has to this one. Long way to go as well. Six-yard line drop picked up by the Sean Johnson tackle by Charlie Williams. So on offense and defense and special teams with a flag down, the Dallas Cowboys sparkling tonight. Joe <laughs> You can't, when you're a special teams coach, you, you break down those films and regardless of the score, you have got to stay on your guys. You can't allow them to lose their edge. And Joe is not... <laughs> He's, he's beseeching them to stay in this thing. Billy Davis for the penalty. You know, we talked before about... Yeah, right there, there it is. is. Good call. About everybody expecting, you know, Barry Switzer to come back. But with all of the speculation, it's funny. I did the interview with Jerry Jones before the game, and then I would mentioned to a couple of the assistant coaches, including Joe on the field before the game, that Jerry said he is back unconditionally. And they reacted with glee. It's almost as if they were wondering themselves, and this was the affirmation, the 27-yard line. They believed you? Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, <laughs> right, I didn't want to tell them, you know, it's Christmas night, <laughs> that we were just kidding around. But it shows you how, you know, how tenuous everybody's position is in a situation where, you know, Barry Switzer has been getting some heat. You don't know what he's going to do or what Sunny. Jerry Jones is going to do. Yeah, well, he's been getting heat from the outside, and then Jones says it, and Jim Eddy is another guy in your picture there, and Dave Campo, they were they were ecstatic. They're just up there now going, man, can you believe what Al told us down there before they... <laughs> Second and ten. They're high-fiving each other. <laughs> Garrison Hurst up past the 40 to the 44-yard line. All, all kidding aside, Al, your point's very well made. This is a... This is a tenuous business at best, and especially being the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. No uh, no bigger pressure cooker, and uh, certainly in the NFL. And the assistant's very happy to know the affirmation comes in the form of Jerry Jones on Monday Night Football saying he is back regardless so is, is an important thing to the, to the assistants. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the relationship between uh, Barry Switzer and, and Troy Aikman and... and whether or not they are close, whether it's strained, whether it's a good working relationship. Fake reverse. And 
and Dave Craig goes down. He's sacked again. Darren Smith is there. That's something you don't see often from the Dallas Cowboys, a sack from their linebackers. They don't blitz that much to begin with. But at that time, that was a coverage sack, too. Dave Craig had no place to put that football. He's getting the play called in by Dave Atkins, and he looks at the corresponding information on his wrist, and this is the result. Craig, after getting sacked for the 476th time in his career, hands to Darius and Hurst for a minimal game. You know, the funny thing about a guy like Dave Craig, he's had all of these sacks. He is the NFL record holder in fumbles, and yet when you look at the whole thing, when you play it out, it's amazing to think this man has thrown more touchdown passes in his career than has John Elway. And not only that, but he has a career rating that's higher than uh, the vast majority of quarterbacks that have ever played this game. He, uh, His numbers, his cumulative numbers over the years are... Uh, and in some sense, is uh, very, very large. His ratio, touchdowns, interception. Dan, you like that? Figure is 247 to 185. Third and 13, and Larry Centers, the new record holder by himself now. Most catches <laughs> by a running back, and uh, he lets Dion have a piece of his mind on his way to the record book. Either that or he's trying to get an autograph. It, was he angry at Dion? Dion just went down like a, a mole, and he tripped over it. Well, Dion rolls off in coverage, and then all of a sudden looks upfield, and this is not what he wanted to see, where he had to come in and make the tackle. And, of course, Dion not wrapping up, just going more or less for the chop block. Center is being congratulated by his teammates. This is a uh, really something that centers, if he'd have seen Dion coming, could have really, I think, high-stepped over the top of him. Is he concerned about him going after his knees? I guess so. Uh, obviously, that's what he was upset about, saw who it was, and had second thoughts about it. I'm well, not going to mess with $35 million man. He didn't go after his knees. No. Dion was on the ground way in front of center. First and 10 at the 43-yard line, the deep drop, the screen to Garrison Hurst is good, blocking out in front, but all of a sudden that breaks down, and down he goes at the 36-yard line, Dixon Edwards with the tackle. It's a gain of six. Garrison Hurst finally coming all the way back from the knee surgery he had as a rookie and becoming what they thought he would be when they took him the first round in 93 out of Georgia. Had a great career there. Problem this year with fumbles. He fumbled 12 times over the last few games. Uh, that really hurt the Cardinals, and they've lost six of their last seven, and Garrison's had a hard time holding on to the football. That's the first catch tonight by a Cardinal not made by centers, and it also tells you no wideout has caught a pass tonight. Nor a tight end. And that's incomplete, intended for the wideout Rob Moore, covered by Sanders. So Dave Craig got in trouble with the play clock. He wanted to make a change, he tried to make a change, looked up, and he was down to two in the play clock, and uh, just poorly timed out between he and Rob Moore, who, by the way, is having a terrific year here, Rob Moore. Over 60 receptions, uh, came from the Jets last year in a trade. Got to wonder about Rob Moore. I don't think he ought to buy a lottery ticket. Going from the Jets to the Cardinals, not exactly upward mobility. There's the football that uh, Larry Centers caught to set the record. Most catches by a running back, 93. It's third down and three, and Craig from the gun with protection. Centers makes his 94th catch. seen by Ronaldo Nehemiah. Well, that was over Larry Brown, but he had to be thinking a moment ago when he <laughs> should have hurdled Deion Sanders. Edwin Moses this is, lives. This is shades of Randall Cunningham if you want to bring it into the football realm. Larry Brown is sort of a, where, where'd you go? Larry Brown never left his feet. It's a, we saw him get tripped up by Dion on the ground. I don't think Larry Brown ever even leaves his feet. So he's thinking he's going to cut block me. I'm going over him. He <laughs> cleared Larry Brown and didn't touch Yeah, he did finally. Larry Brown did go down. What a leap by center. First and goal now from the seven. First. And he gets 
down to the two and a half, three yard line. Flag comes in at the end of the play. And let's take a look at this high centers of gravity one more time. <laughs> Defying gravity is more like it. Keep in mind, he's a pretty big man too. He goes about 215, 217. He is way up over Larry Brown. What a incredible effort. I'm sure the fact that Deion Sanders cut him down a few moments ago, that put it into his mind. Larry Brown. He doesn't want to make of it. I don't think they ever, they ever even touched, did they? I'm not sure he even grazed his shoulder pad with his shoe tip on I the way by. He Here's where the Cardinals have had a problem, getting the ball into the end zone there. Down in that red zone, they've had a tough time scoring from down here. Wouldn't you be tempted to let Larry Center leap? Penalty was against the Cowboys, so there's no play. It's first and goal, and the catch is not by centers. He couldn't hang on to it. Well, Dave, Dave, covering. Dave Craig put some smoke on that ball. He's rolling out to the right and he's got centers and Dave winds up and throws a bullet to centers. Actually, it wasn't in a bad place. Yep. It just had no oh, much no. on it. It was in the perfect place. Because he never controlled it. You know, this is... This is a pretty remarkable feat by centers of catching it. You're right. The officials were correct in not giving him the catch. Second and goal. Garrison Hurst. Hurst, amazingly this season, over 1,000 yards, he has one rushing Here's touchdown. One. Well, the Cardinals don't have a whole lot of a team. Well, they, the, 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 the uh, what, they have three as a team? <laughs> three as a team. Emmett Smith has 24. Yeah, yeah. That's... I think that tells you something about which team has a winning record and which team I think has a 25 uh, total touchdowns and five of them have been scored by the defense. Inside the 10-yard line, only a 38% conversion percentage for the Cardinals, last in the league. Meanwhile, let's take a look at centers again. Ooh. That's just... Now, with the ball hitting the ground, I, I think the official makes the right call. I don't see how he could have called it any other way. And we have come to the two-minute warning. Third and goal when we come back. Two minutes left in the first half at Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. 12 play of the drive coming up for the Cardinals. And it's third down and goal as they try to somehow scramble back into the fray. They're down 24 to nothing. But if you're Dave Campo, the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, these are the types of stands you'd like to make to really get your team feeling good about itself on the way into the playoffs. Third and goal. Craig. To the end zone, tip deflected and incomplete. And luckily for Craig, not intercepted. Tipped initially by Godfrey Miles. So fourth down, and they send in Davis in the field goal unit. You know, you probably hear more booing being 24 to nothing, uh, down 24 to nothing, but I, I would say that about half of these people are Cowboy fans. I'm talking to one of the Cardinal coaches. He said, looked around the stadium and said, we may have to put the silent count in tonight. Rob Moore actually saves the interception. Davis, 21-yard field goal effort is good. Campos defense Simmons. 50 to go in the half. It's 24-3, Dallas. You can't hold, go home again, Al. Yeah, right. Well, that's where I used to skip a lot of classes. Somewhere down there. Called your first football game here? Absolutely. 1962 from the Goodyear Blimp. A shot of Tempe on the campus of Arizona State from the Goodyear Blimp Eagle. And which one of those cubby holes down there did you buy the racing for? <laughs> Paradise. It's a 45-minute <laughs> drive from the campus. <laughs> Great place for long shots. Still is. Here's the kick taken down on the five-yard line by Kevin Williams. And he brings it back up to the 25-yard line and tackled by Marcus Dow. Dallin, let's get a report from Lynn Swamp. Well, well, Al, you know, this is a great shot of Dan. And I, I assume, Dan, that you'll always be a Cardinal deep in your heart. Is, is this really you? Yes, it really is, Swanee. It was, uh, you know, they didn't change the uniforms. They changed the cities, but uh, they did not change the uniforms.
And that was about the last time we had a winning team, too, <laughs> when that card was taken. They have, uh, uh, winning seasons have been lean since the, uh, since the 70s. Mm. 84 was the last. They scored the first Cardinal Dallas game on Monday Night Football. 38 uh, nothing. The big red. Here's Aikman throwing too deep for Michael Irvin. That really, uh, that was the game where uh, uh, Don had quite a meltdown during the course of that. Uh, that was 1970, I think. It was. Ooh, and Eric Williams. Not a good sign for the Cowboys here, as it's time to get serious. I think everybody knows about Eric and the automobile accident that he had last year, missed the balance of the season last year and came back earlier than expected. Hasn't been quite the dominant performer he was before he got hurt and uh, Ron Stone, the guy that would come in and back him up, but you got to keep your fingers crossed that this is nothing serious for big Eric Williams. It was the knee that was damaged in that automobile accident that underwent a lot of repair during the offseason and he did return for the opening game this year against the Giants. So Williams getting up, good sign. An excellent sign for, for the Cowboys as he walks. There he is on the right side, there's 79. Let's, well, it looks like he gets kicked on the right ankle by one of his own teammates. Somewhere there on the right lower leg. Well, that's even a better sign. That the knee didn't buckle. Right. So Dan, right. you were saying Don had a meltdown, and I'm sitting here thinking Don Coriel or Don Meredith? Don Meredith. Oh, Don, Don Meredith. Meredith. Oh, no, no. The Cardinals uh, beat the Cowboys 38-0, mm -hmm. and Don, of course, doing Monday Night Football at the time. Uh, well, he'd give him the points. He felt vexed. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, good, Frank. <laughs> he was really into it. Oh, <laughs> uh, he loved his Cowboys. You know what I'm talking about. He suffered that night. I want to hear you. Yeah, yeah. I want to hear you get out of this one. Yeah, well, he had the over as well. That was the bad news. Second down and 10 from the 26-yard line. And the catch is made up at the 30 by Eric Bjornsson, the tight end. And the Cardinals take a timeout here because they anticipate getting the ball back and they try to conserve some of the clock. A buck 32 left in the half. The Dallas Cowboys wrapping up the regular season. The playoffs begin this Saturday. Both playoff games Saturday. Miami against Buffalo and Philadelphia against Detroit right here on ABC. They're Eric Williams. back in the game. Bad boy, that's great news. Third down four from the 32-yard line, and they give it to Kevin Williams on his second carry of the night, and he comes close to picking up a first down. This will be turning into a less feature Kevin Williams night. A couple of reverses, a couple of touchdown passes, and a first down. And now Arizona provided a little break for the uh, Cowboys by calling that defensive timeout on the last play. As the Cowboys now have plenty of time to work their way into scoring range with a minute to go in the half. Aikman with great protection. Throws, catch made by the tight end Bjornsson. And the uh, rookie knowing to run out of bounds here to conserve the timeout. He's out of bounds and has the first down at the Arizona 48. Cardinals yeah. choosing a unique defensive concept there, Frank. Uh, not even covering Bjornsson. It's uh, guaranteed to uh, be a successful conversion for the offense. All you have to do is, is find him. You'll be able to spot him. He's out there in the flat all by himself. Bjornsson uh, filling in for Jay Novacek. Uh, should the Cowboys move through the playoffs? They'll probably get Novacek back. He had orthoscopic surgery a couple of nights ago and is already out and around and feeling pretty good about it. 48-yard line. Aikman, Emmett Smith. Emmett seeking that first down. He's close, but he's able to stop the clock and gets uh, some assistance on the sideline to prevent him going into the chain link fence. Emmett, who's been bothered by a strained quadricep. That's the thigh muscle on his right leg, and uh, every time he carries it now, especially when you see him have to come to an awkward stop like this, when he goes out of bounds, you have to worry about it because, you know, that's when you're a little off balance, and boy, there's uh, some help from a friend when you need it. Especially in this stadium where uh, there's not a lot of room between the sideline and the fence. Second and inches. 
First down to the 33-yard line. And now the Cowboys will take a timeout with 41 seconds remaining in the half, and the Cowboys have one remaining, leading 24-3. Troy Aikman, 179 yards in the first half, which is 41 six remaining, first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Everybody yelling he was off, but there's no flag as Williams makes the catch at the 23-yard line. A lot of jumping up front, but no penalty. Cowboys conserving their final timeout. They move the chains first and 10 at the 22-yard line. So Dallas already in field goal range and now looking for more. Smith, wide open, flag down, stopped at the 9, and the clock stops with 16 seconds remaining. Boy, did Emmett dig himself a furrow down around the 10-yard line when he planted to cut back to his right. Well, that was flag came late. It should be in the coverage against the Cardinals. There's the, uh, there's the hole that, uh, that Emmett dug when he tried to plant and cut back across, and it's remarkable he kept his feet. Illegal hands in the face. Defense number 21. Finley is declined. First down. Lance Brown, rookie out of Indiana. 14-yard gain. And the Cowboys still have a timeout left, so they can take a couple of shots at the end zone. Here's Emmett Smith, and we can count on the fact right there is that big chunk of Saudi threw out of there. And if the Cowboys get a couple whacks at it, I can only assume that Barry Switzer is going to give the ball to Emmett Smith both times. He would love to get Smith that record before halftime. That was a great look at the balance of one Emmett Smith. Tripped right, and they break that formation. And Irvin goes to the left, and there's a whistle before the play as Clyde Simmons. He actually intercepted that ball. Well, the, the Cardinals were, they had multiple people across the ball. That was a good illustration of the 46, chaos and disruption. Offside, defense, unabated to the quarterback, right to the snap, five-yard pin, first down. And that happens a lot. An interesting thing there is uh, the clock operator, sensing what was happening, never started the clock. Mm -hmm. There's still 16 seconds showing. And it's a half the distance penalty, so they're at the four now. So now Emmett gets two really good whacks at it, I would think. Well, if they, they have only one timeout left. There it is. Interestingly, most touchdowns in the season, each of those guys scored all of their touchdowns on the ground. No reception. The score. got started. I think that might have been Kennard again. Uh, at least Aikman was pulling away from the center and well, Kennard's yeah, he's shaking not, his head. If he's not at fault, he was certainly lying on the ground like it was his fault. Trying to bury his face in the turf. Tr trying to burrow underneath that side and make it all go away. Aikman anticipating the ball is pulled away from Kennard. Hmm. I think Barry Switzer, one of the things he didn't like about that is he'd like to have gotten Emmett Smith out of this game after he got the record and just killed him. Barry, been late. Uh, Kennard snapped the ball on time. It just never made it to Aikman's yeah. hands. Yeah. For some reason, you could see it go off to the side. He snapped it when Troy wanted it, but it <laughs> he just didn't deliver it. Again, the, the loss of Ray Donaldson in many ways... Uh, Makes this cowboy cowboy offensive line not the line it was at midseason. Kennard, of course, started last year, but he started at right guard for them. Now, with, with 12 seconds left, the Cardinals somehow are going to try to get into field goal range. Of all things, the catch is made by Stevie Anderson, and they look around and they questioningly ask for a timeout. Well, maybe they'll give Davis a good whack at it. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Fred Musburger. What's up at the half? 
Al, thank you very much. Brandon, we had some beauties this year, starting on opening night when the Cowboys began our 26th year of Monday Night Football, so impressively against the Giants. And then we saw them in midseason, and they routed Philadelphia, and clearly they were the best team in the league at that point. San Francisco missing Steve Young, among others, but that following week is when the Niners went in there. Jerry Rice caught the early touchdown pass and changed the whole season around. So the Cardinals, well, with six seconds to go, not only do they need a game, they need a defensive penalty. And all that does is add to Larry Center's record and the hands will end as he takes it up to the 34-yard line. End of the first half. All Dallas. They lead it 24 to 3. We'll return after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABC. First half stats, and it's uh, reflective of the score. All Dallas. <laughs> Leading in every significant department. And uh, with almost twice as many total yards as the Cardinals. You should have got that plate in the first quarter. Kathy might have seen it. <laughs> you did my night. We're taping it for you. <laughs> Here we go as we start the second half. And what's become a uh, cool evening in Tempe, Arizona. Bonio sends the kick down to the 13-yard line, and LaShawn Johnson swings to the outside, and Brock Marion, who had an interception in the first half and ran it back in for a score, runs him out of bounds. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Miller Brewing Company, wishing you and yours a very happy holiday season. Cadillac and your Cadillac dealers, and Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. I think for the Cardinals right now it's a gut check. Wouldn't you say, Dan, you played on teams that have, uh, you know, with nothing going for a game, you know, a game like this, no playoffs in sight, uh, you just got to reach down and say, hey, I'm a football player. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to give it everything I got, even though I'm, we're going nowhere after this one tonight. You hope that's the, their attitude. And, you know, these, a lot of these guys are getting ready to go home for the offseason, but they still have 30 minutes of work left to do. And the Dallas oh. defense right there again, Leon Leck. Making the tackle. Again, a, a, a statement there by Lett that this is the position for me to play on this Dallas defense. It's a defensive tackle. And we will not have another embarrassment like we had at the Meadowlands last week. Look at that penetration by Lett. Dead play. Second down 10. Russell Maryland in street clothes there, and uh, they hope to have him back. He's been in and out and has been bothered all year with injuries but they'll have a week off next week and then uh, the way things are going right now home for january at least until they hopefully get here as the pass is incomplete the next road trip for the arizona or for the uh, dallas cowboys will be right back to arizona I guess I misspoke. That game was in Dallas last week, not the Meadowlands. No, we did the one in the Meadowlands. I knew what was the Giants. Yeah, that was opening day. That was, uh, I, as much as I've tried to forget it, <laughs> 35 to nothing. Well, the Cowboys are the uh, kings of Monday night this year. 35 zip on opening night. A uh, tour de force performance against Philadelphia, 34-12 in November. And all Dallas tonight. Third and 10 at the 32-yard line. And I don't know who has the answers for where this Arizona franchise goes, not just in terms of personnel and coaching with whether or not Buddy Ryan will be back, but where does the franchise go? There's a lot of question uh, swirling around this team about Bill Bidwell wanting a new stadium here in Phoenix and the possibility that they'll leave here all together. Eagles check is not a work of art, but it will look terrific on the stat sheet, thanks to a 17-yard bounce down to the 23-yard line. That kick, 55 yards. Early third quarter, Dallas up by 21. No 
Philadelphia Sugar Bowl comes your way New Year's Eve. That is, uh, what is it, Sat the su uh, Sunday night next week. Virginia Tech taking on Texas. And then uh, Ohio State and Tennessee are, are co-number fours, each winding up a tie in the polls. In the Citrus and in the Rose Bowl, USC and Northwestern. That's New Year's Day right here on ABC next Monday. Now, no sympathy for that guy. I mean, it's about, it's about 58 degrees. <laughs> That's a little bit of an overstatement. <laughs> At the 13-yard line, first down, Aikman, and that pass is incomplete, trying to jam it into the late flag right. down. Yeah. Lorenzo Lynch was there. Lynch going over the top, and they were right on top of it. And intended for Michael Irvin. Cardinals of Cardinals have really had a lot of problems with secondary Lynch and Hogue. The two safety men have both been in and out of the lineup with pulled hamstrings, and this time Lynch raced all over, draws the the flag. It's that right hand, and they're right on top of it. seven-yard line, and you know, one of the problems that Dallas has had in the estimation of many is the loss of Alvin Harper, who opted for free agency, but at this point of the season, Kevin Williams is truly making his presence very much felt. And I think causing some problems for the defensive coordinators are going to face the Cowboys in the playoffs. All of a sudden, they have to look at Kevin Williams in an entirely different light. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of it tonight, too. Think about it, guys, when you look at the Cowboys, you're not just looking at Michael Irvin. You're going to have to respect Williams. From the 38-yard line, Emmett Smith, and then when you look at those two guys, you feel that Emmett Smith not only as a ball carrier but receiver and the tight end Novacek. And with a question mark surrounding Jay Novacek, Kevin Williams, this is not an option. He has to step forward. He has to become a factor in the Cowboy passing game because without Novacek, Michael Irvin is going to, he's going to move from being double teamed into being triple teamed. There's uh, Watkins, who really is the blocking tight end. He's a little hefty to be, a little hefty to be running downfield, challenging free safeties. He comes in about a nifty 290. Second down and eight, and then Smith takes the toss, picks up four, gets up to the 44. Eric Swan drops him. So Emmett Smith has already won the rushing title. He came into the game with 1,705 yards this season and has won the title by uh, a large number of yards over Barry Sanders. Four out of the last five years he's won that title. Right up there with some pretty heady people that have carried the football over the years in the National Football League. And put together multiple seasons of winning the rushing title. And Barry Switzer now moves into the territory of where people are going to start second-guessing him about still having his starters. Ooh, and, and maybe he should leave his starters in a lot longer because Aeneas Williams has just turned it into a ball game. His second touchdown on an interception this season, his sixth interception, Pro Bowl bound once again. And he's a gambler, but if you're a good cornerback, you're going to be playing in that Pro Bowl in Honolulu. You are going to be a gambling cornerback and Williams either off of frequency, off of study he just knew that that was the pass pattern they were going to run, he stepped right in front of him and he was gone. Well certainly Aikman has now removed that problem from Barry Switzer's plate we'll be down to a 14 point game and uh, the Cowboy regulars are in for a while. Beautiful work by Aeneas Williams well, that one that Aikman should not have thrown either no. Williams, he was right in the picture Extra point by Davis. It's Williams' second touchdown run back of the season. The Cardinals this season have run back four interceptions for touchdowns. They have more touchdowns on interception returns than they do rushing. How weird is that? 24 to 10. Troy Aikman throwing that interception run back by the Pro Bowl corner Aeneas Williams to make it 24 to 10 Dallas with 11.30 to go in the third quarter. And Greg Davis' kick 
taken at the nine by Kevin Williams. Flag loses the football. Cardinals come up with the football. Lance Brown comes away with it. And if the penalty is on the Cowboys, the Cardinals are right back in it. The defense has already come out for the, uh, it's the Cowboys, ball. so the Cardinals know they're going to get it. Holding, number 40 on the receiving team. Billy is declaring. First down. Side judge Howard Slavin made the call. Bill Bates with the holding and Arizona with the recovery. No Christmas gifts tonight for the Cowboys. Kevin Williams right up the middle, and he is hit hard from the left side, oh, then hit again from the right by number 26, and boy, that's a fine pop put on there. And that's the kind of a hitting double team that really brings the ball out of there. Tony Jones, credit him with the hit that does it right there. There's Jones, 26. And now Craig tries to capitalize, going for the six, and it's incomplete, and Deion Sanders all over Rob Moore. No flag. Single coverage. He had him all the way, and that was good coverage. That was the essence of coverage. Well, it's one of those, where you come back into the huddle, and you say, I can beat him, I can beat him. You've been saying it probably the entire first half. They okay, going to and they'll know they'll have single coverage. He might have been a touch early, but you're not going to get a flag in the end zone on that, I don't think. It was just too close. Even the left hand on the shoulder. He might have got away with a little something there. Second down, 10 from the 28-yard line. Garrison Hurst, he's going to throw, and he's throwing off his back centers at the 11 yard line they won't get style points but it was effective he could have gotten rid of that a little earlier that could have been six points that's his second pass of the season his first was incomplete that's a you're right frank if he could have thrown it earlier but for having to make the adjustment and for falling backwards and completely you know off balance falling backwards He's still got enough on it to get it to center. Right now, I'd have to think that uh, a little bit of Dallas's heart is up in their throat. But this is where the Cardinals struggle. They struggle all year long inside the red zone. And the 11 batted away by Deion Sanders. Rob Moore, who has not caught a ball tonight, again, the intended receiver. Boy, and I, I wonder if this isn't the personality of Buddy Ryan coming out, going after Deion Sanders. Well, he's making a mistake. That was a terrific play by Sanders. Well, in fact, the back terrific plays by Sanders. Forget it. It's not going to happen. You're down in an area where Sanders is going to lock up very tight on any receiver he's covering. All right, now the goal line, and that was a superb play. Watch the play action to the right and coming back again to Moore. This is something the Cardinals been working on right here. Second and ten, a reverse roll, and Craig slides in gloriously to a hold. That was the play right there. Before the game, Ted Flum was telling us about it. They wanted to set up Dion because if, if the receiver acts like he's going to block, they think Dion takes it easy. The play action that time was to try to fool Dion, and obviously he was not. Yep. There is Ted Flom, who is among those making the play calls, though that seems to be uh, shrouded in mystery here in Phoenix. And that's a doggone it look on his face. Yep. We worked all week on that, and it didn't work. And again, the Cardinals continue to struggle down here inside the red zone. They have had a tough time all year long getting it in. Third down, 10 at the 11-yard line. From the gun, all kinds of movement. FS. Dan, I understand the philosophy and the thinking behind that, but Dion's not going to get caught unawares down here. I mean, that, that's the kind of play you, you'd run around at, at the 50-yard line and maybe catch him napping. But where did he tell us they were going to run it? Yeah. Inside the red zone. It's a plus 20 on the way in. They thought that Dion uh, falls asleep a little bit when he, when he judges the play being run the other way. 
obviously uh, Dion had that extra cup of coffee at halftime. <laughs> yep, and he's been involved in, in two of the, uh, the three prior plays as well. Which will get your adrenaline sure. flowing. Mm -hmm. it'll, uh, it'll raise your awareness level. Third down, 15. Four wide outs. Gray going 10-yard line. Catch is made there by Anthony Edwards, but he can only get to the six. So it's fourth down, and in comes Davis to try to tack on three and shave the lead to 11. And it's not, uh, it's not six inches for the first down or the touchdown. I, I don't think you can argue with the, uh, with the call here by Ryan to go ahead and, and take the three points. Greg Davis, 23 yards. Just good. 8.47 left in the third. Ryan a little happier. His team climbs to within 11. Short kick into the arms of Kevin Williams, who fumbled his last return. And he brings this one back up to the 28-yard line. So the uh, Dallas Cowboys, who are on the verge of totally blowing out the Cardinals, now find themselves in the, a mini dogfight. They also got a great effort from their defense to hold that to three after turning it over. A couple of interception for a touchdown, followed by a, a fumble on the kickoff. That, that could shake a team up pretty good. They could have got that in for six, the Cardinals. Well, they're still a threat to get back into it, but it would have hurt a lot more. 8.38 left third. <laughs> Bruce Johnston in motion from the 29-yard line. And Aikman throws. Johnston makes the catch. And Moose takes it to the 38. And a lot of Dallas fans here. It, it's funny. I think El Paso, Texas, is actually closer to Phoenix than to Dallas. Well, and before the Cardinals uh, came to Phoenix, uh, the entire state of Arizona was part of the Cowboys' uh, radio network. So uh, they have, Tex Ram got that started, and they, they uh, spent years cultivating this, uh, this, uh, this Arizona population into being Cowboy fans. And down in New Mexico. Yeah. Big favorites there. Second down and one from the 38-yard line. Smith up to the 42-yard line. Clyde Simmons makes the tackle. I think about that preseason game we did in Mexico City uh, last year. <laughs> As you look at uh, Dion, who clearly has been to Tiffany's himself over the holidays, and the way the, uh, the Mexico City crowd was chanting Moose, and that's Eric Williams again, shaken up. Oh, he's he grabbed his shoulder, tapped his left shoulder. So an injury timeout with 7.39 left in the third. William Shaken, Cowboys lead by 11. The Arizona, not only the site of the Super Bowl at the end of January, but the Fiesta Bowl, Florida, Nebraska, here next week for the national championship. First down, Dallas from the 42 after the timeout. We'll check on Eric Williams. Smith goes next to nowhere, so Eric Hill makes the tackle, and there is Eric Williams, again, none the worst, well, you shouldn't say that, because at least he's able to get up, but he's windmilling that shoulder right now, Ron Stone replaces him. Seth Joyner of the, uh, I believe that's Joyner of the Cardinals, is, boy, he's hurting, he is really in pain walking around out there with that right arm just hanging. Well, he's going to try to stay in there, but if they get a man on him, he's going to be in trouble. Second and nine, and Aikman's going to gun one to the 48-yard line into the arms of Kevin Williams, who was covered by Lance Brown, and that is very close to a first down. And for joining, it looks like it's probably just a singer because he was in on the play and now appears to not even be concerned with it. And Eric Williams comes back with the set. One of Buddy Ryan's boys in Philadelphia. Remember a game he had on Monday Night Football a number of years ago when he was still with the Eagles? In Houston. Oh, Eric Williams back in the ball game, but Seth Joyner turned in one of the best individual games we've ever seen on Monday Night. Classic night, and he wound up in the Pro Bowl that year. Aikman throws, and it's 
caught at the 30-yard line, and the big night continuing for Kevin Williams. Williams Lance Brown Williams. makes the tackle. Williams just 5'9", and on the other side, you've got the 6'2", Michael Irvin. Troy making some fine reads tonight with the coverage over on Irvin, single coverage again on Williams. A little move by Williams. It's subtle, but it freezes. Lance Brown, and he moves to the inside, and Aikman is right there with the ball. And Michael Irvin here any moment now is going to be telling Troy Aikman, hey, uh, remember me? I'd like to be a part of this. Huge night for Williams. He's caught eight for 171. And it's Smith okay. to about the 26-yard line. Garth Jacks makes the tackle. Against Saturday, postseason play begins in the NFL. Both games on ABC, Miami and Buffalo. Get it started from Rich Stadium. 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 in the morning Pacific. Then, Detroit and Philadelphia, the Red Hot Lions, seven straight, going to the vet, 4 o'clock Eastern time. Wild card Saturday right here on ABC. Second down, eight from the 25-yard line. They can throw, to a wide open, and it's Smith who takes the ball to the 10-yard line. First down. Well, will he get it? Will he get that 25th touchdown? Well, you think so much about Emmett rushing the football that you really don't keep close tabs on how many times he catches the ball coming out of the backfield. That puts him over 60 for the year, and, and those are big-time numbers, much less from someone with over 1,700 yards rushing. Factor in 60-plus receptions, you're, you're getting your money's worth from Emmett Smith. 62 receptions total, but no scoring, no touchdown through the air. On the ground, he gets to the nine-yard line. They can barely pick up a first down without getting a touchdown, but in effect, it is second and goal. Smith Sullivan is the prime receiver, but he is the checkoff man on so many. In that last particular ball they threw him a moment ago, he just set up about four or five yards downfield, and Aikman looked over the deep people. Nobody there. He goes to Smith. Oh, you throw him a four or five yard turn in or a little hook or something, he could turn into something big. Second and goal, eight yard line. Johnson the fullback, Smith is the tailback. Toss, Smith. He's out of bounds at the five yard line, third and goal. Evan Smith on the carry. 312 remaining, or in the third quarter. 24 to 13. And on top, the uh, the Cowboys by 11. Blint. Floating over the Tempe Butte and looking down into Sun Devil Stadium. The Goodyear Blimp Eagle. Well, if you're really just looking to score, play action, <laughs> making the ball to Emmett Smith that is a, uh, a pretty solid bet here for the Cowboys. Irvin in motion. Third and goal. Smith stays in the block, and the pass is not caught by the Moose. Johnson can't hold on. Uh, when it could have been caught, but I mean, that ball wasn't well thrown at all because Johnson was wide open, and he could just uh, uh, kind of flip it to him, and he made that almost impossible to catch. How about the block by Emmett Smith? Watch Emmett Smith step up and pick off Alexander. He just stops him dead in his tracks and knocks him to the ground. And you're right, not a very well-thrown ball. Emmett Smith, you knew he wanted that touchdown, but he did what he had to do. Watch this shot. Ba-oom! He does it all. 23-yard field goal. Boniel out of the hold of Jet puts it through, and the Cowboys pick up three. With 2.33 left now in the third quarter, the Dallas lead is 27-13. Tied, I guess <laughs> that's what happens when you're a Pro Bowl running, but yeah, that goes with superstardom, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't think Pro Bowl even gets you that. You've got to make that next level. <laughs> Joe Avizano and his special teams will watch their coverage as Boniel sends it skyward. Late in the third quarter, Dallas up by 14. LaShawn Johnson 
Ridden down at the 22-yard line. A lot uh, of talk recently about the relationship between Barry Switzer and Troy Aikman. Here's what Barry said about it before the game. I have to be me, and I will never be other than Barry Switzer and how I go about things. We have one relationship, and that relationship is built on one thing. That foundation of both of us are committed to winning. I can never understand why anyone perceives it because of my attitude is that I'm not committed to winning. And Troy and I have that together. That's our relationship's built on that, and our loyalty should be to the Dallas Cowboys, and that's what our relationship will always be built on. Barry and Aikman, it's been a big story in uh, Dallas and has made its way out to the rest of the country as well in the past week from the 22-yard line. Craig. And he is shoved out of bounds by Darren Smith at the end of the play. One of the other things that might be bothering Dre Aikman is the fact that since they, that injury in Thanksgiving Day, the knee and then the back injury and uh, I think he's been playing hurt and I think he's been playing hurt bad and there is no rule of football that says that Barry Switzer and Troy Aikman have to be great buddies or that they even have to be friendly uh, it's called production yeah you look at a lot of uh, quarterback coach relationships over the year uh, uh, Joe Montana and Bill Walsh weren't all that close uh, Chuck Knoll and Terry Branch winning is what counts now what makes it interesting is the fact that Troy Aikman wields a lot of influence with Jerry Jones and the entire organization. That's the wild card. Second and four. Craig throws, pass too high, intended for Rob Moore. Third down. Be third and four. Larry Brown covering. Brown getting to play a lot this season. You, you keep forgetting on opening night, uh, despite that 35-0 route, the Cowboys lost the great Kevin Smith. Smith has just signed a huge contract, a Pro Bowl caliber cornerback, and so Brown getting the start until uh, Sanders got there, and then Larry moved over, and uh, he's been an everyday player. Clayton Holmes, of course, out of the lineup, too, under suspension, so they had to make some major adjustments in their secondary. Third down, four. 45 left in the third. Only a three-man rush, and it's caught by Larry Centers. And with some nifty running, he's tackled by Mary at the 42-yard line. Where would this Cardinal offense be without Larry Center? He, he is the offense. He Off is. Off-center. No, they, 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 they wouldn't even be on the screen. This guy, uh, we're getting a chance, and it's a shame that he's playing for a football team that only has four wins. But enjoy the scenery, because Larry Centers is becoming one of the really special players in the NFL. Hang it out there. Larry, none of your teammates were close enough for you to pitch it to. This guy's, uh, this guy's getting it done. Eight catches, 117 receiving yards for him tonight. First down up at the 43-yard line. Craig, decent protection, and then the receiver falls down, and that's the rookie, Frank Sanders, who slipped, and uh, Frank's been a non-factor tonight. That's too bad in a way, his uh, exposure. Without a catch, the rookie from Auburn appears to have a uh, brilliant future. How many uh, wide receivers have receptions tonight? One, one. The Cardinals, right? Well, Larry Centers came into this ballgame chasing Roger Craig, but in reality, with an entire quarter to go, Centers is making a run at 100 receptions. Well, if I were the rookie Frank Sanders, I might think about a new cleat. Does he have 97, George? Is that what he has on the year? He came into this thing with 89. 97, he has eight tonight. Only Anderson and Edwards, two wideouts, have caught balls tonight. Second down and 10. Craig looking and throwing, and uh, nobody home. Third down. The Cardinals have completed 11 passes tonight, eight of them to Larry Centers. Is that a cactus hunting moon? Well, I think that's, uh, I think that might be um, a salamander hunting moon. I don't know, I've got to call Keith. A, a Gila monster hunting moon. A Gila monster moon, <laughs> that's, that's a good one. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce night here in the Phoenix area. Third down 10. The 43. And the pass is caught by Stevie Anderson, but he is tackled 
immediately by Robert Bailey with a half a minute to go in the period. Well short of the first down and the cards to kick. Tony Tolbert, we talked about him earlier playing with two bad knees. Probably will undergo surgery. Uh, that ball wasn't even close to being caught. Tony will probably undergo surgery after the season. Williams and Sanders both drop back with Fiegels to punt it. As the period winds down, the kick is a short one and is downed by the Cardinals at the 20-yard line. That's where Dallas will take over when we start the fourth quarter. End of three, 27-13 Dallas, and Monday Night Football returns after this word for a B title quarter begins at Sun Devil Stadium. Al Michaels with Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan, the Dallas Cowboys, trying to wrap up home field advantage throughout the playoffs, leading 27-13, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Damage Smith. Ooh, and he runs right into Eric Hill, the middle linebacker. No game. And the Cardinals do have some linebackers that will put a pop on you. Hill, one of the fine middle linebackers of the league. And again, like Garth Jacks, uh, somebody that we don't see a lot because of their record, they have not been on national television a lot. But this is a big time hit by Eric Hill. First round draft pick in 89 out of LSU. We've seen Garth Jacks already tonight. Terry Irving. Seth Joyner, of course, many times a pro bowler. They've got some players. Second and 10 at the 20. Opening minute, fourth quarter. Moose Johnson is split wide to the right. And the pass is incomplete as Kevin Williams over the middle with Lance Brown covering. Third down. Now Lance Brown doing what all rookie corners have to do. Hang in there. We're going to have some go against you, and he has seen his share tonight both passes caught against them some penalties but he has uh, persevered and he's still maintaining close coverage he, you can't lose your game you can't get frustrated you can't back off the confrontation you got to stay with it third down and 10 from the 20. Cardinals rush four Aikman throws tip incomplete Intended for Bjornsson. Good coverage that time. Seth Joyner got a hand on it. I mean, he's big. He's 6'2", a 235 pounder, but I mentioned earlier, I've covered him in working on the superstars, and the guy is uh, an amazing athlete. He ran the 100-yard uh, the dash in about 10-2. Just an amazing athlete. Look at that. They use him in coverage on the outside anywhere. And, of course, the former Eagle and Buddy Ryan loves him. John Jett to punt, Anthony Edwards to run it back. Mm, flag is thrown, pretty bad kick. 26 yards out of bounds at the Cardinal 46 yard line. Aeneas Williams came charging in. And, but the holding call will go against the Dallas Cowboys. And Arizona will Tough to turn down the field. This penalty. Yeah, tough to turn down the field position they have. Dick Hantak is the referee. 27 yard punt officially. To be declined. Holding on the offensive team number 86. Penalty is declined. Results of the play. First down. So the Cardinals have the ball in Cowboy territory with 14.04 to play. Quarter for a total of 35 yards, and the Cowboys with Emmett Smith looking on, watching their defense, trying to dig in against the Cardinals, who trail by 14 points. First and 10 Arizona at the 47-yard line. I say it's hard for the Cardinals out of Arizona State. Hard for the Cardinals to score with their defense on the bench. 
You haven't mentioned where anybody else is from, and that's the second time you've met Carver from Arizona State, Al. Well, you, you know, know I know you're home here and everything else, but I think you're really showing favoritism. You're always trying to tie things in. Here's a guy coming home, right? <laughs> Number one draft pick. Yep. Made a nice play. Good inside yep. move here. Knows this turf very well. Yep. Tried to play him on the inside. He's not quite big enough for that. They moved to the outside. Leon let, came back inside. Doing a good job. Second down and 10. From the 47-yard line. Great throws. And the catch is made by Oscar McBride, the rookie out of Notre Dame. And that's close to a first down. But Darren Woodson, he is really hurting. He's got a sore shoulder. He's got a... He's got a bad hand. His left shoulder is just killing him. And uh, his right hand, he I said hello to him tonight. He couldn't shake hands with it. Watching him trying to tough that thing out last week in that game against the Giants was really something. And here he is again now in the fourth quarter of the season finale against the Cardinals trying to do the same. That was the first down on McBride's first reception of the night. to the 29-yard line. It'll be second down. And Monday Night Football is being brought to you by GoldenEye. United Artists brings you the biggest James Bond movie of all time. Southwest Airlines. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. America's truck stop, the new Dodge. And AT&T, your true choice. If I'm the Cardinals, I go right back to what I just did. And that is hammer the ball at this Cowboys defensive line. They got a good surge that time. Hurst took it upfield. I wouldn't go away from it. Second and three. Hurst. And he's close. Hurst through the first, but he's about a yard shy. Third down and one. That was more of a delay. The previous down, the Cardinals got a great surge off the line of scrimmage. This is where this defense has really shown some problems in the past. They've worn down as the game has gone along. They're not a big physical group. They've given up at least 140 yards rushing in four of their last five games. And most of it right in the middle. Third and a yard. Center lines up on a wing and then goes in motion. And Hurst has the first down to the 22-yard line, tackled by Miles. With 11.45 left in regulation. Funny thing about the Cowboys tonight, they began the game so brilliantly, and the confidence level that we talked about in the beginning was on its way to maybe getting back to where it was a few weeks ago, and now all of a sudden, some self-doubt has to start creeping back in. They can't put the Cardinals away. Or was that, there was that one throw by Troy Aikman out into the flat that Aeneas Williams brought back to start this second half. That, uh, that hurt the Cowboys. And they fumbled the next kickoff. Number 22, Hurst again, and he gets taken down by Leon Lett as he crosses the 20-yard line to about the 18. Well, if it wasn't for Leon Lett in the middle, Again, we've documented how Russell Maryland is not playing again tonight because of the, the sprained toe. But Leon Lett is, is really taking control of things. He's doing all he can do. He's just not getting a great deal of help on the line of scrimmage. This guy is a load. Chad Hennings playing over on the other side. Second and five. Juggled incomplete. It'll be third down and five. Chad Fan, the intended receiver. Again, the card struggling down inside the 20-yard line into that red zone. Well, they, they could have used a better block by Garrison Hurst. He's he got to get a chance to get a pop on somebody. He's got to he's got to bring it and make a stick. Dave Craig's having to throw with some people in his face. Now here's the play by Hurst, but you got to do more than that. Oh. You know, Darren Smith is coming in, and you've got to you got to do more than wave at a guy. You get a chance. He's going to put a hit on you if you're running the ball. If you get a chance to put on him while he's rushing your quarterback, take advantage of it. Third and five. Four man rush. Heavy pressure. That's Leon. Loose ball. 
Thomas Pool. Yep. Yeah. 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 What a night the big man's having. Humble and Drew, recovered by Dillon. First down. Godfrey Miles recovers it. Just good hustle by Leon Lamb. Oh, he's playing like two men tonight. He Craig, sure is. Craig is going to contend his arm was coming forward. And... Ooh. And it was. Yeah. And it was. Upon further review... Ah, uh, never mind. 10-12 left in the fourth. He's the guy that makes the play here. Beats Duval Love upfield, but then keeps hustling. Comes around and slaps the arm of Dave Craig. We've looked at it from about four different angles. Uh, two or three of them, it did look like his arm had started forward, but it's easy to see how it didn't get called. They run Williams again on the spin around end around and Lance Brown makes the tackle. That fumble by Craig, by the way, that adds to another record, his own 144 career fumbles and Dave wins the uh, fumble championship this season. That's his 16. I think he won the sack uh, championship too, didn't he? He was sacked 50 times coming into tonight. Sack title, fumble title. <laughs> Wonderful. Or 52 times, I think, coming into tonight. How many sacks tonight? Uh, Another handful or so, three tonight, 55 sacks. Second down, seven, nine and a half minutes to go. Cowboys lead by 14, and Mitch Smith doesn't find a lot through the middle. The Cowboys, uh, well, they're, they're holiday fair this year. The Dallas played on Labor Day. They played on Thanksgiving. They played on Christmas. And they hope they play. Well, the, the Super Bowl is it's right around Groundhog Day, is it? Groundhog Day is what? I don't know. It is right here. I'll call Bill Murray and find out. I'll get on my sneaker phone and I'll call Punxsutawney Phil and I'll get the answer definitively. Consult your almanac. February 2nd. Close. Where will you be February 2nd? <laughs> we'll all be preparing in therapy. For in the therapy, I can tell you that. <laughs> But in Honolulu, which is good. Third and four. And Moose Johnson makes the catch. And Aeneas Williams takes care of him up at the 40-yard line. First down, Dallas. Darrell Johnson just will, will not run out of bounds, will he? He looks for somebody to hit. What an asset he is to this football team. Seen a couple of big-time blocks tonight. Good receiver. Works out of the backfield. Seldom ever makes an error on pickup. First and 10 at the 40, 805 left in regulation. Dallas leading 27-13. Bateman surveying under pressure, then throws. Catch made by Michael Irvin. His first catch since the first quarter, but it's a catch that nets no gain. Tackled by Williams. Williams last night had his knee locked up. In fact, Aeneas Williams was listed last night as doubtful for the game. That's something that you have to do. You have to uh, update your uh, injury report, but uh, responded today and has played the whole game. Really wasn't a factor in the first time that the Cardinals played the Cowboys earlier this year, got hurt. So uh, this is Michael Irvin's uh, first real taste of Aeneas Williams here in 95. Second and 10. Incomplete, incomplete. Sort of a tentative call there, but uh, incomplete. Daryl Johnson dropping it. Terry Irving was there. Aikman, I think, a little upset with the pattern that one of his receivers ran. Uh, Terry Irving slapping it out and he did not have possession. But a ball, wouldn't you agree that more often than not, you'll see Daryl Johnson catch? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right in the hands. Third and ten now. Resetting the football. It had slid back about six inches or so. And Troy has five seconds on the play clock.
Well, that, you know, that, well that's that wait a minute. Calls it. You know what they should they have done? Reset they the should clock. have reset it. They should have reset the play clock. Yes. I think Dallas calls a timeout. Some confusion on the field, and Emmett Smith and Dick Handak go over it. Howdy, and what, 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 what the other one? By the way, that was uh, a timeout that was not charged to the uh, Cowboys. Uh, it was an official's timeout. Uh, they realized their error that they didn't reset the uh, the clock and put the Cowboys at a disadvantage. So we'll start this back at 25 seconds. And it's third down and 10 up at the 40-yard line for the Dallas Cowboys. 7-11 to go in the fourth quarter. 27-13 Cowboys. Cowboy 38. Big time call coming up here. And it's going to go again. Funny at first, both teams started to come back as if it was going to be called against Dallas. Yeah, that was double coverage over on Michael Irvin. They, he's been getting it all night long. This time he just raced by the defender this is lynch up close he's getting help from the inside and deep from the safety man who's supposed to be over there that's williams and he just gets there late and a good read by the two of them aikman and Irvin. 47 yard gain for michael Irvin. we're going to double him doubling uh williams is slow and getting over there aikman 338 yards through the air tonight 171 with williams and 82 with Michael Irvin. That's Aikman's best performance of the season in terms of passing yardage. And from the 13-yard line, down goes Emmett Smith for a loss of one. And again, if, what would be perfect for the Cowboys here is to wrap it up with a touchdown and have number 22 take it into the end zone for the record. We're seeing an awful lot of slipping tonight. And I was down on the field earlier. I know you were down there, Dan. It, it appeared to be in great shape. Now, the one thing they are going to do for the Super Bowl, as I understand it, that they are going to come in after the Fiesta Bowl and resod this entire stadium in anticipation uh, of the Super Bowl here on the 28th. So what we've seen tonight, that's good news. Yeah, it is good news. And you're right, I, I agree with you. It, it certainly didn't look like it up close. Second down, 12. He can throw. Catch is made by Johnson. He gets written out of bounds near the first down marker at the three-yard line. By Carlos Brooks. Okay, load up Emmett. And it's a first down and first and goal. All right, now it's pretty clear that number 22 is going to be your man. Well, it's pretty clear in any circumstance. <laughs> you will see the man. serious Emmett Smith right here. But you'd think that that's what every offensive lineman, this is a, this is an offensive lineman's dream right now. How about a nightmare? They know where it's going to go. Yeah, but they, they get a chance to be a part of history. To say, I was there. I helped block for the guy when he got the record. Emmett Smith. He's All got right. the record. The crowd knows it. It didn't come easy. And you want to know something? You want to, you want to make a bet that that's exactly the same play that they tried twice against Philadelphia and didn't get it? Sure. Right off left guard. That's the fourth and one. Moose Johnson leads the way. He had the block here to spring him. Emmett Smith, 25 touchdowns. Bye-bye, Riggins. And 100 for his career at the age of 26 and a half. 100 touchdowns. And maybe more importantly, a little breathing room now for Dallas, who is left 17 to nothing, but they had gotten in trouble here. Road to the Super Bowl, and the NFC will be going through Texas Stadium. Thing alone in
in the record book now. 25 touchdowns. What a classy man, too. And he's touched. Goes along with a great football act. But this is a classy man off the football field. You know, emotionally, look at this. Emmett Smith is, uh, hmm. he has an appreciation of the history of this game and the accomplishments. I, uh, this is this is a guy that just doesn't take this in stride. But Dan, it got down to within six minutes of the yeah. season being over for Emmett Smith. And well, I'm sure it's been the back of his mind over the past two or three games. It's quite a relief. Boniol to kick off, 34-13 is the score. He and Michael Irvin enjoying a delicious moment on the sidelines as Larry Centers runs the kick back up to the 31. A lot of ways to put Emmett's mark into perspective. One way is to look at the Cardinals. As a team, collectively, offensively and defensively, the Cardinals have scored 26 touchdowns, and that ball being marked by one of the Dallas aides for Emmett Smith, number... 25 for the year. If Emmett had a microphone in front of him, I'm going to guess that he would say, thank you, Mark A, thank you, Nate Newton, Derek Kennard, Ray Donaldson, Larry Allen, Eric Williams, Michael Irvin, Moose Johnston, all of my offensive teammates, because it is a team game, and they all had a little part in the 25 TDs. New quarterback is Mike Buck, and that, that snap went clear over his head. It's a bad beginning. Irvin McCormick is there to end the play inside the five-yard line. So Dave Craig done for the night. Arizona season on its way to winding towards well, Ed Cunningham, the center. Uh, I don't know what he expected. Uh, the quarterback. Well, that's past the buck. That's a tough deal. That was that was very 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 pathetic. Buckle six three. It's terrible. Larry Sessions and Dion. Well, if Dion doesn't tackle him, and then centers with a stiff arm before he steps out of bounds at the thirty three. <laughs> Who is it who said it gets 12 million, 999, 999 to defend in a box to tackle? He thought that was uh, Dave Brown on a scramble. And Dion holding his leg. I'm sure Dion will say right away that they don't pay me to do this. They pay him a buck. <laughs> that was about a dollar tackle. Attempted tackle. Still third down and about seven because of that errant snap and Rob Moore up to the 39-yard line. And uh, it'll be fourth down. A reminder, coming your way, a doubleheader on Saturday. Wild card doubleheader. Miami taking on Buffalo from Rich Stadium. The game begins at 12.30 Eastern time. And then uh, at 4 o'clock Eastern time, it will be Detroit and Philadelphia. Good matchup from the vet. We'll be there for you. Doubleheader this Saturday right here on ABC. Well, that's a great... Two great matchups on yeah. Saturday. Miami Buffalo played a terrific game a couple of weeks ago. Buffalo just edging them to get another go at him. Fourth and one, and look out on the uh, Cardinals going for him. Buck throws, and the pass is incomplete, and there is no flag, and Dallas will have the football. Stevie Anderson, the intended receiver. And we can tell you as we wind down the year that the executive producer of Monday Night Football has been Jack O'Hara and our new daddy, Ken Wolf, the great Wolfman in his 10th season. Craig Janoff of Scottsdale finally gets a home game to wrap up the year. Wonderful job, Craig, throughout the year. Joey Chavo has been with this program since his very inception. Ben Harvey has handled uh, the associate producer duties and, uh, of course, began the year with a great hole-in-one, Jaime Bravo, creating the Opens and our associate director. Great crew of people, about uh, 70 of us from week to week around the country. As Wade Wilson is the quarterback and Smith takes the ball to the 38, Kirk Dowdy Jr., Charles Coughlin produced halftime, which was directed by Calvin Haywood, Jeff Suarez, the uh, TD at the half. Dick Buffington, Bruce Clark, Patrick Manis, Dick Ellis, Patty Gorish, Bill Bolin, and uh, the gang, Simon McKenna and Weiss, along with Zabo and Lakata, sending out the pictures and sounds from around the country, and the great Brian Gordon, who did he win it all the emeritus, year? and Victor Vitarelli. 
our assistance to the producer. Great team. Proud to be a part of it. Great team. This is the Sherman Williams. And he's tackled at the 35-yard line. Steve Hurt. Couldn't do it without the man, the man, George Hill, Malibu, Kelly Hayes, and Andrea Bryant running the ship from high above. Bill Monahan down, down on the side. Down on the side. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, it's a splendid group. I, I, it's not until you see all the names of the... Donnie Schultz, Disco Donnie. Men and the women who work on this show, do you realize how many people it takes to get this production into your living room and family. Yep. Third down and seven. From the 36-yard line. As Wade Wilson launches one. Williams makes the catch. Takes it inside the four before he fumbles it out of bounds. Lance Brown with the coverage and Kevin Williams has just set a new Dallas Cowboy team record for combined yardage in the game that's rushing receiving and return yardage tonight for Kevin Williams through the air alone he has 203 receiving yards Lance Brown on the coverage and he is ruled down right at this spot even though the ball bounces away and goes out of bounds and the Cowboys are left first and goal and what a night for, for Kevin Williams that's an excellent excellent call there it is 314 yards he has accounted for Herschel Walker against the Eagles in 86 had the old mark of 314 Sherman Williams flags are down with 209 to go in the fourth quarter well the, the guys who bring you the pictures are just uh, well, it was the best, the best ever. The Drew, all-star crew. Drew's mom, Andrew DeRosa's mom, I, I, having a little trouble, yeah. but I understand she's feeling well. Drew couldn't be with us tonight. I had, a, I had well. a look at that name a second time, Andrew DeRosa. Andrew. Drew. Excuse me. Big West Line. And, and the guys, Kurt Struve and Dave Bushner. And the group on the... Uh, and uh, that is some collection. Oh, yes, isn't that? They lock <laughs> Especially that Especially number two and number three there. Watch they, out for those. They put guys. them in there every Monday night and lock them up. Home of Jabella Productions. <laughs> Richie D. Steve Korn, Bob Paveni, just top to bottom. Such a wonderful group of people. First and goal from the two-yard line, and Sherman Williams bumps into his own man and then gets ridden down by Chris Lamalunga as we come upon the two-minute warning. That much time left until the Cowboys head home with a week off and home field advantage, 34-13. What does it take to win two Super Bowls in a row? Two minutes to go as we wrap up our 26th season. Dallas has wrapped this one up. Lance Knapp has been with us uh, for several years now up here in the booth. And the audio and lighting folks, along with engineering and maintenance. And um, most of us travel now to uh, Philadelphia for the uh, wild card action. And others going to uh, Buffalo. Wild card Saturday coming your way this week here on ABC. Hey, Fred King is still on the crew. That's an yeah. R.E.D. in New York. Vince D'Addario there. Vince D'Addario controlling uh, the operation. We're just, we're, guys, we're just pawns. It's as simple as that. But we're, we're in great, great hands. That's what they keep telling us. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Mandel, uh, so capably handling uh, all of the, uh, <laughs> the flack, so to speak. <laughs> From both sides of the coin. To the three-yard line goes Sherman Williams. And uh, the Dallas Cowboys heading home after the game, 34-13. to The Cowboys will wind up with the best record in the NFC, a mark of 12-4. and And the Arizona Cardinals will end this season, which began so promisingly, at least in terms of uh, the prognostications. The mirror image yep. of that with a mark of four wins and 12 losses. And I guess all you can really say at a point like this is 
day two. Well, that's what I'd say because it, the other something's thing, going to happen. The other thing you can say is it's a good thing that these fans don't have snowballs. They brought Buddy in to save it. He was eight, eight a year ago, and there will be four and 12. Sherman Williams can't advance. Terry Irving making the tackle. I'm feeling smaller and smaller. What a collection. <laughs> didn't realize we had that. What, about 70? That's a lot of per diem, baby, people. I'll tell you that. And the blip. Yes, sir. Santa heading home. Mickey Whitman. Sammy, Santa acts like he ought to get home. <laughs> Joel Chamberlain and Glenn Hampton yep, up in the... It. Right. Mickey up Whitman. in the blimp, and Santa, put your feet up. You've had a long, hard day. Mickey downstairs uh, coordinating the blimp coverage. 24-yard field goal by Boniol is good. So Boniol tonight, extending his streak, he's kicked three, and he's now made 25 in a row getting close to a mark Not, too. Well, that'll carry over to next year. Not a bad way to start the year out, is it? On the tail end of a 25 uh, consecutive field goal streak. That's longest one he's made. 45. The longest one he's tried is 49. Cowboys very effective in moving the ball once they get <laughs> down in the red zone and so he's, he's been kicking a lot of chippies, boy. That's a tremendous mark to put 25 in a row together. 37-13 the score. Dan, we started this off before about the Cardinals and, and where they'll go and what they'll do. And we, we'll wrap it up. We talked to Bill Bidwell before the game, and he said, my, my preference is to stay here in this area, but he wants a new stadium. He'd like a dome stadium. He's having a very tough time getting anybody to move on it politically. We asked him about Buddy Ryan, and he said Buddy will be evaluated at the end of the season, which is uh, hedging your bet, and there is the owner of the Cardinals. Buddy has two more years left on his contract. This is Marcus Dowdell. Run out of bounds by Brock Marion. And the Cardinals have two years left on their original commitment to play here at Sun Devil Stadium in, uh, in Phoenix. And after that, uh, you know, this is a franchise in play. If uh, I think it's safe to say if Phil Bidwell does not get the new stadium that he would like to have here in the Valley of the Sun, uh, he has shown that he's willing to do it. This franchise could very well be on the move again. Mm -hmm. Scary, isn't it? Well, he, you know, you know, he feels like he was victimized. He yeah. feels that he was promised a dome stadium when he moved here in 1988, and it it was out on the table, and then it was pulled back, and there's there's some hard feelings because of it. This sounds like Cleveland all over yeah. again, because they, as you look at centers, taking it up to the 47, it's the football owner complaining they've taken care of baseball, they've taken care of basketball, the hockey team's coming here next year, the Winnipeg Jets, and they haven't taken care of football. It sounds familiar. I agree, there are similarities. And by the way, as this game winds down, I want to just say congratulations to Larry Centers. This guy, you know, the last, he just ran that last play, and while he's on the ground, calls for the timeout so he gets a chance to do it one more time, down 37 to 13. Here is a warrior. Boy, this guy is a player. It's hard to go to the Pro Bowl, Dan, on a 4-12 and team playing in his position. Not only that, setting a record from that position, He's a remarkable uh, no. it's easy. young fullback, too. It's, it's easier to play well on a good football team than it is on a loser. Well, the it's a lot easier. The Cowboys may have struggled at the end of the year, but they're going to wind up just where they want it to be. The best record in the conference. Home field advantage. They don't have to worry about facing Green Bay in their first playoff game. The centers takes the shovel pass. They will meet either Atlanta, if Atlanta beats... Green Bay or the winner of the Detroit-Philadelphia game. The season ends on the 100th reception for Larry Center in 1995. There's still one second left, buddy. Come on back, babe. And Arizona just took a timeout, so... Uh, With one second. <laughs> yep. Buddy pulling a Woody Hayes. Whoops. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hello, buddy. Yep. Buddy is... Buddy is... Buddy, he doesn't want to yeah. come back. What if they score on this play? I mean, uh, it yeah. might, might say something. The buddy will say, go for two. This <laughs> Perfect. This restroom is cleaned by Showtime Services, Inc. What a way to go off the air. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh man. man. Wacko world of Buddy Ryan. Yep. <laughs> buddy developing real tunnel vision. <laughs> Centers. I love this guy. Look at yeah. that. Terrific. <laughs> Good for you, Larry. We'll see him in Hawaii. We don't know when we'll see Buddy. <laughs> the Cardinals wind up 4 and 12. The Cowboys wind up 12 and 4. And Dallas with home field advantage through the playoffs, winning it by a score of 37 to 13. The great Emmett Smith, the record holder now, 25 touchdowns as the Dallas Cowboys end the season on an up note, 37-13. Big weekend coming up. Until we talk to you Saturday, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynn Swan. Good night from Tempe, Arizona.